and Sir Cooper. I'm voting against this cover up. Uh, Mr. Poliver. Against the cover up. And Ms. Ramsey. I'm strongly voting opposed, and I'm shocked at the behavior of my it's colleagues. It's disgusting. So, so that being you said, should be ashamed of your. That being said, the motion is adopted. Meeting is adjourned. The SNC-Lavalin affair is drawing international scrutiny as the OECD monitors allegations that the Canadian government tried to politically interfere in the criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin. The attention from the OECD's anti-bribery unit has drawn further criticism of Justin Trudeau on the world stage. Meanwhile, here in Ottawa, the opposition is outraged their efforts to bring Jody Wilson-Raybould back to testify a second time have made no progress. They say it's a cover-up. Joining me now from Toronto is Canada's ambassador to the United States and a senior advisor to Justin Trudeau, David McNaughton. Welcome to the show, Ambassador. Thank you very much. Good to be here. You advised Justin Trudeau on the SNC-Lavalin affair. You were hunkered down in his office for a day while you were visiting Ottawa, giving him advice. How is the Prime Minister handling the fallout from the scandal? Well, I think, you know, to begin with, uh, I was in Ottawa to talk to the Prime Minister about a variety of things, including um, the things that uh, are really important in terms of my primary function, which is to deal with Canada's most important economic relationship, and that is with the United States. So we talked about 232 tariffs and uh, the approval of the new NAFTA agreement and a variety of things, and obviously because of my relationship with uh, the Prime Minister, uh, you know, he, he sought my advice on, on other matters also, and, uh, you know, I'm uh, happy to do so, but, uh, you know, I, I am really focused on, on trying to get rid of 232 tariffs and, and, and to do the things that uh, I need to do in terms of improving our relationship with the United States. And I do want to get to those tariffs later on, but he gave a press conference later that week after you advised him. Do you think he should have apologized? You know, uh, I think the Prime Minister uh, seeks advice from, from a variety of people, and, um, and I was quite happy to give my advice, and it was private advice, and it will stay that way. And then he, uh, as I found uh, frequently, makes up his own mind, makes his own decisions, and... Uh, and uh, he is uh, he he did what he did, and I think we're you know we've got a budget coming up next week. There are an awful lot of things on the agenda, uh, and uh, I know he's pretty focused on all those things. In 2015, you were one of the Liberal campaign co-chairs. The campaign was about transparency, about doing politics differently. Many are looking at what happened here and the access the powerful have to the Prime Minister's office and the allegations being made, and they're questioning if this is the stereotypical old-style Liberal politics. What do you say to voters who are heading to the polls and say, this isn't what we voted for? Well, I, I'm, I'm not saying anything to voters. Um, you know, I have, uh, in my position, I have to be uh, nonpartisan and have said I was going to be and I will be. Uh, but I should also say that, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, uh, you know, was campaigned on when I was in that position was also uh, improving our relationship with the United States, uh, securing our access to the U.S. market, expanding opportunities for Canadian business and Canadians to do business abroad and and I think uh, you know this we've worked really hard at that and I know for sure I have uh, the last two years have been as uh, challenging a time physically emotionally uh, in every other way in terms of trying to make sure um, that that Canadians had continue to have opportunities to uh, have open and free access to our largest uh, market. 72% of our exports go to the United States. And so that's really been the focus of my attention. And, and I'm quite proud of what we've done. Well, let's turn our attention to that. When it comes to USMCA, uh, some of the Democrats have been suggesting that they are not at all in favor of it and they may not sign on to it. What reassurances do you have that USMCA is actually going to happen? Well, you know, in the U.S. system, there's never any, uh, particularly these days, there's never any guarantee about what outcomes are going to come out of Washington. But I, I'm, I'm quite confident that, that it will pass through eventually, particularly if the Americans remove the 232 tariffs on Canada and Mexico. Uh, you know, when you, when you look at it, and, and I have said to Democrats who've asked me about, about the agreement, you, you know, there is a labor chapter. There is an environment chapter. 
in the rules of origin, 70% uh, comes from you know, the, the content comes from North America. There's a clause that talks about, you know, uh, $16 an hour wages. It's the, all of these things are new things. There's, you know, the elimination of some of the um, ISTS provisions. I mean, all of these things are things that uh, I know many Democrats have been asking for and seeking over the last several years and and they're they're actually in the agreement now one can always argue whether the provisions are perfect um, but I don't think one should let the perfect get in the way of the good and this is a good agreement it's a good agreement for Canada uh, and I think uh, I think the, I think the Americans will come to the realization when it when it actually comes to a vote that it's a good deal for them too and you know one, a lot of the people that you hear, talking about how difficult it is uh, going to be to get it through the U.S. Congress are um, people that are selling their services to business saying that they would like to help get it through and you know having been in that business once before in my life I, 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 I sometimes take all of those comments with a grain of salt I'm confident that when it comes to a vote um, you know the U.S. Congress will pass it uh, that's up to them to do, but I think, uh, you know, when asked uh, by members of Congress, I've told them what I think are the benefits of the agreement, and it's a good deal. But Ambassador, back in February, you said that you were convinced the tariffs would be lifted on steel and aluminum in the next few weeks. Um, you were pretty confident about that as well. That hasn't happened. Do you have any indication that those tariffs on steel and aluminum are drawing to an end? I, I continue to be confident that they will be removed within the next few weeks. I've, my, my position hasn't changed. Um, Why are you confident about it's that? It's just the, the few weeks of... Well, because I think, you know, I, I, if you look even yesterday, I mean, Senator Grassley, who is the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, so he's a pretty powerful guy in the United States system, and he was saying, you know, that these tariffs need to go and that he does not believe that uh, the, 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 the trade agreement will get passed unless these tariffs are removed. And not only did this, is he, he believes they should because they're harming U.S. businesses, U.S. consumers, U.S. communities. That's why I'm confident. It's not just because, uh, you know, I think we've done a good job of, of, of improving our relationship with the United States. It's also that these, uh, these tariffs are hurting them. You know, for, for 16 years in a row, the United States has had a surplus in steel with Canada. Last year, the United States had an $835 million deficit with Canada in steel trade. So for those who say to me, well, the tariff program is working, it's not really working very well because U.S. exports to Canada and steel went down by $800 million last year. Ambassador McNaughton, thank you That's so much for your time today. No problem at all. Thanks, Mercedes.